Hi, good evening. Well, tonight we're going to answer that big question, does melatonin increase dementia risk? It's become a hot topic lately, and what we have to be careful of when we Google Dr. Google is that we don't come up with one of the myths or apps that really don't have scientific evidence back behind them. So I'm going to tell you tonight about melatonin, the facts, and the fictions. So let's get further with that. Before I go any uh, more, I'd like to say I'm Dr. Birkenstock, owner of Skin Body Health in both Mandeville, Louisiana and New Orleans, Louisiana. We're also licensed in Florida and Alabama. Worldwide, at, at, in most of the nation and, and, and some in Canada and South America, we do Zoom, Facebook, and, and some other personal consults, which we're happy to do for anybody as well. Um, Please like and share our videos so we're trying to get our communication and share good information to as many people as possible. Any of our prior uh, events can be seen on our YouTube channel, Dr. Birkenstock Skin Body Health. As most of you know, we come to you guys most every Tuesday and we discuss topics such as anti-aging, beauty, uh, hormone replacement therapy for both men and women, um, erectile dysfunction, menopause, andropause, and the like. Tonight, of course, we're talking about the almighty hormone melatonin. Well, melatonin, as you may or may not know, is an actual hormone made in our body. When we're very young, there's tons of melatonin. That's why babies sleep so much. They take great naps, which gives us a break to carry on uh, the uh, chores of life in between their napping. As we get older, that melatonin decreases and decreases so at a slow level when we're younger. But then as we begin to age, melatonin really drops off. And that can happen in your 30s, your 40s, 50s and beyond, depending on you and uh, how your hormones are aging. The body's biological clock regulates hormonal functions, which evolve over a person's lifespan. As a result, aging often affects activities such as sleepfulness or sleep and wakefulness or waking up patterns in the morning, which in some cases become increasingly disrupted and fragmented. Some people have had a lifelong problem with sleep and for other people it only happens middle age and beyond. Uh, for some ladies the hot flashes and the night sweats can be very interrupting which can absolutely be fixed with bioidentical hormones which is something another one of, of the fields that I spend a lot of work and a lot of research on. Melatonin is one of these key hormones that governs their circadian rhythm. Their circadian rhythm is simply the clock of the human body and it really wakes up and goes to sleep two different times during the day and night. You may have heard, but that's why a lot of heart attacks happen between the hours of 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. because that's when your circadian rhythm is waking up for its other phase and at that point in time, the blood pressure can spike and you can go into a heart attack or stroke, uh, which some people aren't aware of. But when you hear about those middle of the night heart attacks, it's because of that circadian rhythm and that blood pressure surge that naturally occurs in most of us. If you've got very normal or low blood pressure, it's going up a little bit, but it's not harmful because that's part of the natural circadian rhythm. On the other hand, if you've got very high blood pressure and it's not under control and it's being raised between 2 and 6 a.m. combined with cholesterol, plaque, and others, that certainly is set up you know, for a heart attack in the middle of the night and thus why you hear about those things. Um, so in addition to melatonin, melatonin puts you to sleep, Mr. Serotonin wakes you up. Um, there are other hormones as well, but they're all part of a lovely, lovely hormone orchestra that beautifully orchestrates and controls the human body. So sleep and dementia risk, air conditioning, sleep and dementia risk. The sleep uh, in people with dementia is disrupted and there's always these scientific studies and arguments going on. Did the dementia cause the sleep disruption or did a sleep disruption 
end up in a dementia. So it's a debate that goes on and really it's starting to think that it's sort of interrelated. That in fact, there's a relationship, relationship between dementia and a sleep and you really can't untangle them. The dementia further disrupts the sleep and a disruption in sleep cycles maybe perhaps be one of the multitude of causes of dementia. So it's a complicated topic. Uh, research continues and it's ongoing and poor sleep could be a contributory and dementia can also cause poor sleep. So a, a circle of events. Um, so let's talk about safety concerns for older people. They've got to have something to help them go to sleep and we all know the medicated products like Ambien or Lunesta or the old-fashioned Tamazepam and even Benadryl because Benadryl can cause bladder issues in both men and older women. Bladder issues aren't fun. It's not fun to wet the bed. It's not fun to go to the bathroom and feel like you can't evacuate fully. And it can happen in younger people too, but especially in older people. So what do we have to give them? Well, one of the things we have to give them is melatonin. So if someone is sensitive to melatonin and they're older, I would give them a portion of the dose, a third or half of the pill, and I would give it to them earlier in the evening, maybe right after dinner, since in an older person, just like a baby, drugs and even supplements and herbs can get into the bloodstream and hold on longer and last longer. And so that's one of the things that you can do uh, to, to make sure that it's safe and comfortable for an older person if they find that they're needing something to sleep. And we know that we can't give them or shouldn't give them anything very, very strong. So in 2015, the uh, American Academy of Sleep Medicine asked us to really watch all sleeping pills and watch melatonin and at least change the dose, monitor the dose, monitor the side effects for older clients because we want to make sure we have their safety in mind as well as helping them get a more comfortable night's sleep. So it, as I said, in, in babies and in older people, and, and um, please don't give melatonin to your babies or kids without the advice of your pediatrician, so I'm not suggesting that. But in older people, which I'm specifically talking about now, their bodies are baby-like. So we want to be careful with their little bodies. So because it could stay longer, we want to not have daytime drowsiness. And one of the ways in which we impact that is by giving it earlier, like perhaps after bedtime, okay, and giving them a lower dose. Um, let's go on. Besides the safety concerns for older people, melatonin in the United States of America is not a prescription. It's just a dietary supplement. And the FDA with dietary supplements counts dietary supplements as food. I know that sounds really confusing. And when I first discovered that, I found it very curious myself. I mean, why would herbs and vitamins that people are taking for their health and ingesting in their body, why wouldn't they be regulated? Not that you would need a prescription, but why wouldn't they make them be counted just like a prescription? For example, if you get a prescription or a medical grade pharmaceutical vitamin or herb from a doctor's office, if it says 21.5 milligrams, each and every tablet better have 21.5 milligrams, not a half a milligram more and not a half a milligram less. And that's regulated by the GMP seal of approval. So might be a little bit hard to see, but all of our vitamins and minerals and herbs, as well as most of the other pharmaceutical grade or medical grade, not the ones found on the drugstore or pharmacy shelves or the GNCs or the Walmart. Most of those don't have what I'm speaking of now. And what I'm speaking of is the GMP seal of approval. You can clearly see it on our website. Uh, and if it's got the GMP seal of approval, that's manufactured in an FDA facility. And you know whatever's printed on the label is the exact potency in milligram of what you're going to be getting in your vitamins. Um, oh, I just saw a question pop up for my staff. Yes, we are on TikTok and Instagram. So hi to our viewers out there on TikTok and Instagram as well. Um, our store link is below in the bio for both TikTok and Instagram. Our store, that was a question, is store.skinbodyhealth.com. 
and all of our products are listed there. Um, tonight, I'll go ahead and mention that since there was a question about the products. We're running a bundle. So we've got our plain melatonin premiere. Um, the melatonin premiere that we have is pure. It's got three milligrams of medical grade medical grade, pharmaceutical grade melatonin. So when you're picking up the drugstore brands that might have 5, 10, 15 or whatever milligrams per serving, it's not going to be equivalent to a medical grade. Three milligrams of a true medical grade product melatonin is plenty enough to get a good night's rest and by doing so you're not going to be overdoing it so that you won't be getting a lot of that nausea or morning after effects. The other product we make with medical grade melatonin is Tranquil and I'm going to tell you why I recommend an interchange of these uh, maybe every other night or you know on the weekends use this or that and there's a reason for that so our tranquil is got a complex of herbs uh, valerian root b6 b6 is a wonderful sleep agent lemon balm passion flower chamomile l-thionine 5-htp and of course our three milligrams of melatonin and what the reason why we've got two products that include melatonin is very simple the brain is very very smart and whether you're swallowing an Ambien or Benadryl, which I don't recommend, um, once a prescription and Benadryl while over the counter, after a couple of weeks, the side effects take over, the sleep profile does not improve, and you're taking it, getting all the side effects, and not really getting much help in the sleep department, and you're definitely interrupting your sleep cycle which is never a good thing. So by alternating between melatonin and our Tranquil products, if you're finding that you're getting a little resistant to plain melatonin, you can kick back the power by using the other lemon balm, passion flower, and herbs, which are found in the Tranquil product, along with our melatonin and HTP. And then the plain melatonin with the three grams of melatonin is wonderful for your other nights. Some people don't need the addition, but if you need them, they're there. So anyone that uh, for the next month that would like to try our melatonin product, then we're going to have a buy one, get one in our store. So you can buy one, get one tranquil, so you'll have both products. Or you can buy one, get one melatonin and have two melatonins. Or you can buy one, get one of tranquil which is the Tranquil Complex that's got the melatonin, the 5-HTP, the passion flower, uh, the lemon balm, and the valerian root. So, let me go on because you still haven't heard what melatonin is doing to that brain. And I'm waiting till the last for that on purpose. Um, we have several unpleasant side effects that can occur with regular melatonin use, especially the cheap store-bought brands that aren't regulated. We know the FDA is not regulating them. And if you're overdosing or taking 15 or 10 milligrams of a store-bought product, it'll be chock full of side effects without being chock full of good stuff. I'll give an example on that. So we've got Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce, which is one of the old-fashioned, the original Worcestershire sauce. And we've got all the other ones, the Heinz, the, the, the whatever store-bought brand, generic brands, and there's several others. In every other brand except Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce, they're made with cheap bulk filler high fructose corn syrup, which is a very bad chemical for the body and the brain. So when you're getting these cheaper melatonins, they're putting in weaker filler forms of melatonin that don't have the beautiful side effects excuse me, the beautiful sleep effects, but they do have a lot of these annoying side effects that comes with cheaper, less uh, integral, uh, uh, less um, a true to the source melatonin. So some of those side effects may be, and they're rare, but they do happen, like stomach cramps, a little bit of dizziness, headaches, nausea, confusion, depression, irritability or anxiety. If you experience this with melatonin, melatonin may not be the right supplement for you. But before you give up on melatonin, try a medical grade, pharmaceutical grade brand made with the GMP seal of approval so that you can give it the true test. So you may already have guessed, does melatonin cause dementia? 
the 2022 studies are out. And in 2022, we know two things. Number one, that treatment with melatonin, good quality, does improve sleep quality in people with Alzheimer's and patients with Parkinson's disease. Two big neurological brain disorders, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, are definitely improved with melatonin, the sleep quality. What we also know is melatonin does not, does not, does not affect the risk of dementia or cognitive function in the brain. And that was put out by the www.alzheimersorg.uk. Brand new study that's coming from the UK. And they've been testing it because there's been a lot of myths out there lately. There's one other study put out February by Mayo Clinic. And this current uh, research suggests that melatonin decreases confusion and restlessness in people with um, Alzheimer's disease. So in people with Alzheimer's disease, their restlessness and confusion is a big thing. They fear easily. And melatonin, given in small doses to, this pa to these patients, are decreasing the risk of confusion, decreasing the risk of restlessness, which are both great outcomes for people with Alzheimer's. It doesn't seem to improve the disease so people with Alzheimer's aren't cognitively getting better, so they're not improving with the overall state of affairs, but some of the annoying side effects that comes with Alzheimer's, like restlessness and confusion, are definitely improved with melatonin. That was put out by, again, the Mayo Clinic, February of 2022. So, in summary, melatonin's a good guy, he does great things, and if melatonin is something that you need if you're having disrupted or uneven sleep, or even an occasional night, go ahead and use that serotonin. Get three milligrams or so of a good quality medical pharmaceutical grade. Look on your bottles for that GMP seal of approval so that you know you're getting a nice potent brand from a FDA approved facility. Or on our website you can read all about the GMP, uh, the GMP seal of approval and what that means by definition. And when you're doing so, when you improve the purity and potency of a product, you're going to get less annoying side effects because there's not a lot of fillers and, uh, and, and junk in your products. So if you've missed any of our previous webinars, our webinars can be found on our YouTube channel. Dr. Birkenstock, Skin, Body, Health. Please like and share, especially share, so that we can involve the community uh, and, and help to spread the word across the United States. And our folks on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Facebook Live, our three Facebook pages, it's always a pleasure uh, to talk with you. And last but not least, we always try to give a treat. For the first three shares on any of our channels, our staff will be watching and we'll send you out a complimentary bottle of our melatonin premiere, and I know that you'll like it. Thanks for watching.